This is Lucio's blaster from the game Overwatch. I built this on my 3D printer and created all the electronics necessary to have background music, sound effects, and lighting. It's the on switch. It's going to go into healing mode to start. Get yellow. And we get the appropriate song. That's the alt trigger, which you push. Regular trigger, pull. Now if I flip the mode switch, Now check this out, time to reload. So we can get our ultimate. You can go online to Adafruit in the learning section to check out all the build details. We'll show you how I built the entire thing, including time lapses, turning the circuits into more permanent prototypes on a permaproto board, and 3D printing these as well as fitting it all together. There are also some tips and tricks that came up along the way, and I'd like to share those. Okay, the first tip is for using heat set brass inserts in your 3D printed parts. Now you can put holes in objects and then put screws through those holes and use nuts on the other side to fasten them, that works great. But this method is also a pretty cool one. I've now used a soldering iron to push this little brass insert into the plastic in a hole that I made in the 3D model, and now, a screw that is of the right size will thread in there nicely and we can use this to join parts such as the top of the gun to this speaker part. And we get a really nice connection. My next tip is to use a tactile switch as a trigger return. So this has a little spring inside of it. I've placed one of these buttons inside of this green plastic piece and then my 3D printed trigger will get pushed back down by the spring after it's momentarily closed the circuit. Now you can imagine on a project like this with three major subsystems, the background music, the lights, and the sound effects, as well as batteries, power management, and charging, there is a lot of wiring. So I have a couple of tips regarding wiring. One, wherever you can, use silicon stranded wire. This stuff bends really nicely around corners and is a lot easier to deal with than solid core hookup wire or even more traditional vinyl coated wire. The other tip is use JST connectors or other polarized connectors where you can and color code them. So this way you can't plug things in backwards when you have things apart and they need to go together such as the trigger and the switches on this or the lights and the speakers. All of those need to be plugged in somewhere and it's very easy to get it wrong. Trust me, I did it, I melted a lot of stuff, it's terrible. The second tip regarding that is use a marker like these silver paint pens to mark one wire across the entire connection. So I usually choose ground, in fact I always choose ground, and I just run a little wire at the tip, at the connectors, and at the other tip so that when you're soldering things in to begin with, you won't get them wrong. And one final tip is where you can make things smaller. This looks like it's got a lot of space in it, but believe me, it got crammed like crazy by the time I had everything in there. So here's an example. This is an Arduino Uno or a Adafruit Metro, full-sized and a full-sized MP3 shield. Here is the feather and the MP3 feather wing that is the same exact thing in many regards, but is a heck of a lot smaller. Now, one place that this can get you is this is a 3.3 volt device, this is a 5 volt device. So when you're talking to NeoPixels, you need to level shift the data coming off of the feather to speak correctly with the NeoPixels. Now there's a tip you can find online for using a sacrificial NeoPixel and a diode hack. I recommend checking that out or getting a proper level shifter. For Adafruit Industries, I'm John Park. And this is the Lucio Blaster from Overwatch.